form. So let's go into the formal definition of a limit of a function. So it says if f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a single number l, again on the previous example it was the number 3, y approach 3, as x approaches c, in the previous case it was as x approaches 1, from either side, then the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l, which is read as what I just said, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. I wanted to note a couple of things here, very, very important for you to see these notes. The first thing, this is not written in this textbook, this is something that I wrote for you. The first thing is, it does not matter what happens at that point, only near the point. In the first example we did, you could have just plugged in the number, that's what happened at that point. In the second example we did, you could not plug in the number, it was undefined, it was what happened near the point. Okay, so it doesn't matter what happens at that point, you don't have to just plug in the number, it's what happens near the point. The second thing is really, really important. It's emphasizing the fact that it has to be a single number L. What that means is if we were filling out this table and we came from the left of it and we got the number 2, it was approaching 2, and we came from the right of it and it was approaching something like the y value of 5, because that's not a single number, 2 on the left and 5 on the right, the limit would not exist. So what this really tells us is the left side and the right side must be approaching the same number. If the left approaches 2, then the right approaches has to approach 2. And what is it if it doesn't approach the same number? If it doesn't approach the same number, you would say the limit does not exist. So let's look at example 1 here. It says estimate a limit numerically. Evaluate the function of f of x equals x all over the square root of x plus 1 minus 1 at several x values near 0 and use the results to estimate the limit of, well the limit as x approaches 0 of x over the square root of x plus 1 minus 1. Use a calculator to complete the following table to help you determine your limit. So the first thing that I want you to notice is, is this a nice function where we can just plug in the number? Well let's give it a try. Think about this, if we plugged in the number 0 anywhere you saw an x, we would have 0 over, well 0 plus 1 is 1, the square root of 1 is 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0, so wouldn't we have 0 over 0? which is the indeterminate form. That means my function is undefined at that point. My function is undefined at that point. Okay, well now I want to approach the number zero, and let's look, they actually gave us the x values we want. What are we going to plug this into? We're going to plug this into the function x over the square root of x plus one minus one. The x values that we plug in, we're going to start off with the number negative 0 0.01, which notice is to the left of the number 0. Then we're going to plug in the number 0 0.001, then 0 0.0001, all of those numbers being negative again. Notice I'm getting closer and closer to the number 0. After we've done that, we're going to plug in the number 0 0.01, then 0 0.001, then 0 0.0001. So we'd be getting closer and closer to the number zero from the right. The question is what is happening to our y values here? What's happening to our y values here? So let's give this a try. I'm gonna go into my calculator. I'm going to hit table. I'm gonna clear out whatever's in there. I'm gonna hit the N over D, the fraction button. On type, I'm gonna hit X. I'm gonna hit the down arrow to get into the bottom. I'm going to hit second x squared to get the square root. I hit x plus 1. Then I hit the right arrow to get out of the radical. And then I say minus 1. So be careful that that minus 1 is not underneath the radical. I'm going to hit enter. Doesn't matter what your start is. It doesn't matter what your step is. Make sure you've highlighted ask x. And then hit OK. I'm going to type in my first number, negative 0.01, enter. I'm going to type in the next one, negative 0 0.001, enter. Then I'm going to type in negative 0 0.0001 and hit enter. I'm going to look at these numbers. I don't know, maybe you guys okay with four decimal places? It doesn't say what to do here. So I'm going to use four decimal places for each one of these values. Here's the y values I'm seeing. For negative 0.01, I'm seeing 1.99. 
well technically it would be five zero but I'm just gonna write directly without rounding what those first decimals are so I'm gonna write it without rounding right now in this chart the next one I would get 1.9994 if I rounded that would have been a 5 that's okay and then the next one I would have gotten 1.9999 notice as we approach 0 from the left what's happening to those y values 1.9949 1.994 1.9999 1 it seems clear to me that it's approaching the number 2 so, what have I said? As x approaches 0 from the left, my y value or function value approached 2. Let's try the exact same thing from the right. So I've already typed it in. I'm just going to hit the up arrow a couple of times. I'm going to type, so I'm in my x values. I'm going to type in 0.01, enter. 0.001 enter and 0.0001 enter. Again, I'm going to use four decimal places here. I'm not going to round. I'm going to write down exactly what I see. So with the 0.01, I saw 2.0049. The next one I saw 2.0004. And the next one I saw 2.0000. There's a five after that, um, but that's what that is. So as you notice, as I'm coming in from the right, 2.0049, 2.004, and 2.0, those numbers are approaching the number 2. So again, what I'm looking at is as x approached 0 from the right, my y value approached 2. And if you notice, from the left, it approaches the number 2. From the right, it approaches the number 2. And these are the same. Anytime these are the same, we know that's our answer. So we know, looking back at the original problem, the limit as x approaches 0 of x over the square root of x plus 1 minus 1 equals the number 2. Again, that might seem a little weird to you, because the function's not defined at that point. If you plugged in the number zero, it's undefined, but the y value, the y value which truly matters here, the y value that it's approaching near it is the value of two. Just to emphasize this, I went ahead and put the graph on here as well. This is the graph over x of x over the square root of x plus one minus one. If you notice at the point when x equals zero, our y value, that's the number 2 right here, so it approaches a y value of 2. At that point, it's undefined, but it approaches the number 2. So we were able to get that using the table without having to use the graph. But the graph is a nice visual reminder of what the answer to this problem is and how to get the answer to this problem.